So, question 9 paper 1, a ring and a disc was supposed to roll down an inclined plane of height h. The time difference was given as 2 minus root 3 by root 10 and they had expected us to find the value for h. Theta was given as 60 degrees. Now, using the ideas of rolling on inclined plane, this is the expression we get for acceleration of center of mass g sin theta upon 1 plus i c by m r square. Now, for a ring since i c is m r square, acceleration comes out to be g sin theta by 2. For a disc on the other hand, i c being m r square by 2, the acceleration comes out to be 2 by 3 g sin theta. Now, since both the bodies had to come down onto the same inclined plane, using the equation s equals to u t plus half a t square. So, the downward distance should have been h by sin theta, so, there was no u. So, like half g sin theta by 2 t 1 square that gave you the expression of t 1 in terms of h. Similarly, for the second body we will have h by sin theta equals to half 2 by 3 g sin theta t 2 square. Now, from here you could have t 1 and t 2 in terms of h which you substitute over here. Upon solving it you get h equals to like 3 by 4 meters which comes out to be 0 0.75 meters which is also the answer for the question. Paper 1 question number 10. The 1 kg block was supposed to come and collide with the 2 kg block which in turn had to perform SHM time period given by 2 pi under m by k 2 pi seconds. Now, we must observe the spring is applying a non impulsive force. So, before collision and just after collision we could apply ideas of momentum conservation and definition for E and we come to the conclusion that after the collision the 1 kg body reverts back with a speed of 2 meters uh, 2 by 3 meters per second actually and the 2 kg block by 4 by 3 meters per second in the forward direction. The question asked was what would the separation be by the time the 2 kg block comes back to its natural length or the spring comes back to the relaxed position. Now, that is supposed to be half the time period goes back there comes back to this position. During that time 1 kg block would be maintaining a constant speed of 2 by 3 and the time taken would be half of the time period that is pi seconds. So, 2 by 3 into t by 2 gives you nearly 2.0933 meters which could be approximated to 2.09 meters. Okay. Question number 11 paper 1. So, I analyzed the situation in uh, two cases one when the battery was connected to one of the capacitors the capacitors in the middle branch were not connected the switch was open. So, this would be charged to its full capacity and we get a charge of plus 8 and minus 8 micro coulombs. In the second part the battery was removed and the uncharged capacitors were connected to this charged capacitor. They had also mentioned the final charge to be 5 micro coulombs. Since the initial charge was 8 and the final charge is 5 obviously plus 3 coulomb micro coulomb charge must have flown to this particular plate. Applying the ideas of induction we fill in the charges possible. Now, they had asked us to find out the value for epsilon r. Now, since the dielectric was filled in the original capacitance was 1, the new capacitance would be epsilon r into 1. Applying loop rule this is what we get. Ok, we go like this 5 by 1 that is the potential change that happens a drop of minus 3 by 1 another drop of 3 by epsilon r equals 0. This gives us 2 equals to 3 by epsilon r or so to say epsilon r is 3 by 2 or 1.50 that was also supposed to be the final answer 1.50.